One of the first things that anybody will consider when specifying an enclosure for a new application is what level of ingress protection or IP rating they're going to require. No matter where the housing is going to be located, you need to be sure that it can protect its contents from any hostilities in the environment, be that water or dust particles. Now, pretty much everybody will know what an IP rating is, but do you know how it's achieved and more importantly, how it may be compromised during installation? This video will quickly show you the different IP techniques which some manufacturers use and also how to avoid some of the more common pitfalls which could cause you problems down the line. The rating system for ingress protection is pretty simple and helps you identify how well an enclosure will protect from dust particles or moisture. It uses two numbers, the first letting you know how well it protects against dust and the second for moisture. For example, IP68 would mean that it's completely resistant against all levels of dust and moisture even when fully submerged in water. Now, every single enclosure is given an IP rating, even smaller ones which may on the face of it not offer any real protection. For example, this small enclosure is rated at IP30. This means that while there are gaps all the way through it, which allows for simple wiring, the three shows that it will protect from larger dust particles, while the zero says that actually it won't protect from water ingress at all. Now, if you're gonna have this on the ceiling of an office, or rather clean internal environment, you wouldn't really worry about moisture protection and just basic levels of dust protection should be enough for a simple terminal housing. And this would be absolutely fine. It would be a nice cheap option and offer the level of protection that would be required. As application requirements increase, so too does the level of ingress protection. Now different manufacturers will achieve higher levels of IP with different methods. But ultimately, no matter how well manufactured the product is, you will need some form of sealing between the lid to make sure that any water protection is offered. Different sealing methods are offered, but the most efficient is to use an injection moulded technique which will make sure that the seal cannot come off or come loose or fold over when the lid is placed on it. Spellsberg has mastered this injection moulding technique and offers products which have injection moulded seals which are one single construction within the walls of the enclosure. A good example of that is the A-Box. Now, it might be hard to see from here, but there's a small seal which runs all the way around the edge of this box and is rubberized, and it's formed and injection molded right through into the box. This joins with the seal on the lid, and when fastened, provides up to IP65 protection, which means that it would protect from water ingress, even with a jet of water firing at it in one direction, which is perfect for any wash down or clean environments, which may need regular cleansing. Now, the lid seal isn't the only thing that can affect the ingress protection of a product. Obviously, if it's an electrical enclosure, it will need at some point some wires running in and out of it, which means that you've got those entry points to consider. So you need to think about how those entry points are going to be protected. The A-Box is available with different entry knockouts, which allows the user to make an entry where they want it and leave the rest of the box protected. Obviously, once the entry has been made, there's a hole in the box and the IP rating is no longer there. So you need one of these, cable gland, just to protect the seal and give that rating back to it. Now some applications, such as circuit breakers, may also require a lid which can be easily opened for access to the internal wiring. Again, you're going to need to think about what level of ingress protection you're looking for, but ultimately you'd expect to see a good rubber seal and a nice clasping grip to make sure that the dust and the moisture level protections are maintained. Now the majority of applications that you'll ever come across would find IP65, IP66 would be fine. But occasionally you are going to want that extra level of protection, which is IP68. This is full protection, even in submersion in water up to 10 metres. Now there's a few methods of achieving this. One is to use extremely well-specified gaskets, seals, hinges, lids, etc. They tend to be slightly more expensive. The other option is to use a standard and well-protected enclosure but to add silicon protection into it. Now this one's obviously been sawn in half, but what you can see is that this gel protects the internals from any moisture creep which may come into it through the IP66 protected enclosure. The gel solution is extremely easy to use and can turn almost any enclosure into an IP68 product. All you do is drill one hole for putting in the gel and another for letting the air out. You mix the set, pour it in and you leave it. You've then got an IP68 enclosure.
Depending on your application, you're going to need an enclosure of different IP ratings and different sizes. To be honest, pretty much anything's possible. The best thing to do is to speak to an enclosure specialist, explain your application, and they can tell you the best ingress protection technique for your application.